Alright, before I start ranking my 15 favorite coasters, I'd like to get two things out of the way. First and foremost is that this is my own opinion, completely subjective, not the definitive top 10 or top 15 at all. Second thing is that there will be controversial opinions in this list, so there you go, there's your trigger warning. I lied, actually three things. My coaster count is in the mid 70s, but I have still been on some fantastic coasters. Here's a list of all the parks I have been to, if you care about that. And no, I have not been on Volcano or Jersey Devil. Getting all that stuff out of the way, here's my top 15. Just barely making it into my list, we have Copperhead Strike at Carowinds, the only Mac multi-launch that I've ever been on. This thing does two things extremely well, and those are hang time and ejector. This coaster, I think, is the perfect fit for Carowinds, and it provides a really fun ride. I was a little disappointed with the launches, but mock launches are designed to get you up to speed, not to provide forces like an intimate accelerator. The layout mainly stays low to the ground, and the lap bars were very comfortable. I only got one ride on this thing directly in the middle of the train because the operator wouldn't let us choose our seat, but that ride was still a good one. My favorite elements on Copperhead are the Jojo roll out of the station, the first loop, and the ejector hill coming out of the first loop. The second half is fairly underrated as well. Moving on to the number 14 spot, we have Stormrunner at my home park, Hershey Park. The launch on Stormrunner still wows me like it did four or so years ago when I first rode it. This launch accelerates you much faster than a lot of the bigger models of its kind. This also has some of the strangest inversions like the Cobra Loop and the Flying Snake Dive. Man, the Flying Snake Dive might be one of my favorite inversions on any coaster ever. My only complaint with this thing is that it's a shorter ride, but I can't complain too much because a lot of the other intimate accelerators are shorter in ride duration as well. Scooting on over to the number 13 spot is King Daka at Great Adventure. Even though this layout is unimaginative, basically top thrill dragsters layout but a little bit taller. I ranked it above Stormrunner because of the sheer speed of the launch and the view from the top hat. Stormrunner may be a more complete ride but King Daka is way taller and way faster. So enough of me comparing it to Stormrunner, let's talk about the coaster itself. I think the front row provides a much better experience than the back from it being more smooth to the better view to the feeling of the wind go by as you zoom down the massive launch track being much faster. The back has almost no redeeming qualities. Some things that I did not mention are the amazing twisted drop and the massive camelback that acts as a brake run. I did not get any airtime on the camelback, but it is better than straight track. Coming in at the no <laughs> Coming in at the number 12 slot, we have the first of two B&M hypers on my list, Candemonium at Hershey Park. Now I just want to get the name out of the way first. It's not good. Don't get me wrong, if this was a kiddie coaster or a smaller ride, it would be fine, but for the biggest ride in the park, Hershey Park's signature ride, I think they could have done a little better. Enough about the name, let's get to the ride experience. Just a side note, I will be referring to the back row for the rest of the ride, because it is the best row. Let's start with the drop. It's not as good as other B&M coasters that I've been on, like Nitro and Intimidator, but it does still provide airtime. The first airtime hill does what B&M hypers do best, and that is to provide floater. It then goes into a turnaround, another camelback, and the speed hill. The speed hill might be the best airtime on the ride, although it is not as sustained as the first camelback. The speed hill is almost identical to the one that you can find on Mako at SeaWorld or Orlando. It then goes into an upward helix, then does a little bank to the side thingy at the top that I do not know what it's called. Into a final airtime hill, the bank thingy at the top of the helix is one of the highlights of the ride. Lastly, by far the best picture op of the ride is the helix around the fountain. If you stick your hands out towards the fountain, you can feel the mist, which is really cool to feel on a roller coaster. One thing I forgot to mention, because I feel like I don't need to mention, is that this thing is glossy smooth. It is the smoothest the roller coaster you can get being a new B&M. Overall, I get this a solid 8.5 out of 10. I only got one complaint with this ride, and that is the length. It could use a couple more elements, and that is the main reason it is not my favorite being m Hyper. Enough about Candemonium, let's move on to the number 12, which is Afterburn at Carowinds, which is my favorite invert. 
I also liked it better than any other B&M blooper that I have been on. This thing packs a lot of punch into a shorter ride. My favorite seat is back row right edge. I also recommend riding it in the front row for a better view. The elements are a lot more whippy and forceful in my favorite seat though. By far my favorite inversion on this coaster is the bat wing. Sitting in my favorite seat does make the first half of it super intense. Same with the first corkscrew. I don't really have any complaints with this ride other than a little bit of head banging on the second cord screw, but nothing major. This for me is number two at Carowinds. Kicking off my top 10, we have Fahrenheit at my home park, Hershey. I think this ride is super underrated and I'm surprised Intamin didn't do more of this model because it is super fun. It is like a combination of a Gerschlauer Yurta fighter with a Beyond Vertical Drop and a 7 Inversion B&M Looper. After that amazing 97 degree drop, you head straight into a Norwegian loop, which I only know of uh, being on one other coaster, and that is Helix at Liseberg. Please tell me in the comments if this double inversion is featured on any other coasters that I did not mention. After the first inversions that make up the Norwegian loop, you head into a Cobra Roll that people complain about the rattle for. And come on guys, suck it up, you get a little bit entering and exiting the inversion. It does not affect the ride experience that much, and I will fight you on that if you disagree. Anyway, next is the two corkscrews that are fun and pretty whippy. Those lead into an ejector hill that you get pretty good airtime on considering the over shoulder restraints. That leads into some bang turns, then you slam into the brink. Overall super fun and complete ride that I have to get on every time I visit if the line isn't over an hour. Coming into my number 9, we have Nitro at Six Flags Great Adventure, my favorite B&M hyper that I've been on. So the reason I rank this above Candemonium and Intimidator is because the airtime and the helix, the airtime feels stronger and more sustained than on the other two that I've been on. Also the helix I think you can gray out on. My brother has a video on his channel that teaches you how to do it. I think it is him ranking his coasters 2020 edition if you want to know how to do that. This ride also felt longer than the other two when I rode it. That combined with the stronger floater and the intense helix puts it over the edge for my favorite B&M Hyper. Okay, number 8 is a very controversial pick, so brace yourself. And that is Steel Curtain at Kennywood. I might be a little biased because this is a roller coaster theme to my favorite NFL team, the Pittsburgh Steelers. But come on, tallest inversion in the world, most inversions in North America, clocking it at 9. Tallest in PA, probably one of the most unique coasters in America. You cannot deny this beast of a roller coaster. Let's talk about the ride experience. This thing is not very forceful or intense, but in terms of versions, you get the best of both worlds. The first half has larger elements like the giant banana roll that provide a more graceful experience, while the second half has smaller, more whippy inversions. I only got one ride towards the back, but it was super fun. A downside to this coaster is that a lot of the elements run together and they don't really stand out, but this is uh, more about the overall ride experience and not as much the individual elements. This is one of the coolest looking coasters, if not the coolest. I mean, just take a second and look at this thing. I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty intimidated by this before I rode it, just because of the, how insane it looks. The last thing is the trains. The restraints I thought were very comfortable and I liked how the seats were footballs as well. Moving on to the number 7 spot is yet another controversial pick and that is Sky Rush at Hershey Park. And hear me out before you smash the dislike button, okay? I think this is an amazing, intense coaster with great airtime moments, but with that being said, the restraints are very hit or miss with me. Sometimes they don't bother me that much, but most of the times they do, to the point where I get stapled at the bottom of the drop almost every time. This makes it really hard to enjoy the airtime because I am pinned to the seat by the awful lap bar. If this got new restraints, it would definitely crack my top 5. And like I said, sometimes they don't bother me and those are the rides that made it this high on my list. If you want the most intense experience, go back row left wing seat. Moving on to a much more enjoyable ride, at the number 6 spot we have Phoenix at my second home park, Knobles. This thing is packed full of airtime, especially with the last 4 or 5 hills. The third row had been claimed by the enthusiast to be the magic row, but I cannot decide if I like it better in the back or in that row. This coaster also got voted the best winning coaster by Golden Ticket Awards. I think it is good fun Woody, but I don't necessarily know if it deserves the title. I ride this thing at least five times every year, so it is safe to say that I have a good amount of experience with it. 
I would say Phoenix alone makes it worth to go in Knobles if you're in the area. Oh, and also I forgot to mention, the buzz bars allow you to get the best airtime you can get on the coaster. Starting off the truly elite coasters of my top 5, we have Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood. This coaster shocked me because of how good it was. The second drop is amazing, way better than the first one. When you're already going pretty fast from the first drop, the, at the value of the second drop you hit 85 miles per hour which is just awesome. This ride would not be that enjoyable going at that speed if it was the old rough aero track. And in 2001, Morgan took out all of the inversions and made this a masterpiece that is extremely smooth. The first half of the ride mainly focuses on speed, but the second half is all about the airtime, and let me tell you that it is amazing. The strains also come down from the side and they give you a lot of room, allowing for maximum airtime. I have no complaints about this ride at all, 10 out of 10. At number 4 we have my last unpopular opinion and that is putting El Toro here at the number 4 spot instead of closer to number 1. I just want to say that I am not trashing this amazing coaster in any way, I just like 3 other coasters more. The reason that I placed it here is the quantity of the airtime. Don't get me wrong though, these are some of the best airtime moments you can get. I just would have liked more of them instead of the twisty section towards the end. When you sit in the back row on this thing, the airtime on the drop, the first two massive ejector hills, and the rolling thunder hill is unmatched. The rest of the, the, the airtime was nothing special, but those four moments were amazing. People also compare the twisty section on here to the one on I-305 or Maverick, and I can say right now that it is not nearly as good as the one on I-305. Probably not as good as the one on Maverick either. That being said, even though I'd rather have the airtime, it is still a decent section. I got two rides on this thing, one in the middle and one in the back. The back is obviously better, but neither of my rides were bad. Enough said about El Toro, let's move on to my number 3 spot, which is the only RMC that I've ever been on, which is Twisted Timbers at King's Dominion. This for me had a better ratio, that being quantity and quality of airtime, than El Toro. Hear me out, the airtime might not be as good in the quality section as El Toro's crazy ejector, but it more than makes up for it with the quantity. I mean, just look at those three ejector hills. Beautiful. The airtime paired with the barrel roll drop and the other inversions make this better than Toro for me. Before I move on to the number two spot, I would like to talk about a couple more things. First being the layout. RMC did not have a lot to work with inside Hurler's layout, but they made great use of the space, packing in a cutback, a trick track double up similar to the one you can find on Storm Chaser, a zero G roll, an outer bank, and so much airtime. I might have ranked this as high as I did because it's the only RMC I've ever been on. Maybe when I get on some more, this will drop down in my rankings, but as of now, it is staying here. I only got two rides on this thing, even though I would have liked to get more. One of my rides was in the back row, and one was towards the front. Great overall experience. At my number two spot, I put Intimidator 305 at King's Dominion here. This by far is the most intense coaster that I have ever been on in my life. You gray out on that first massive turn every time and it is awesome. This ride reaches over 90 miles per hour. It does not really focus on the airtime, but I got very little on the hills that were there. But that's okay. I-305 isn't really all about that. Let's talk about the twisty section that makes up the rest of the ride. This section is very aggressive and consists of S-curves and rapid fire transitions. It does get a little repetitive by the end, but I don't mind. A couple things that I have not mentioned are the intimate over the shoulder restraints that I actually like. You can find these on Stormrunner and Fahrenheit Hershey Park. I rode this thing over 10 times when I went to King's Dominion because me and my brother liked it that much. Overall, very powerful and intense ride that deserves my number two. And the number one spot, you guessed it, Fury 325, the world's tallest and fastest Giga, which is manufactured by B&M. I cannot say enough good things about this coaster. I don't even know where to start with this thing, man. It's so good. You know what? How about we start with the drop? 10 out of 10. If you are sitting in the back, you get amazing airtime being pulled over it. If you are sitting in the front, it feels longer and you can get an amazing view of the city Charlotte. This drop just feels endless. For me, all around, this is a front row coaster. I can sacrifice the airtime that you would get in the back for the view, the feeling of your face being peeled back by the wind, and it feels like you are going faster than if you were in the back. If you guys didn't know, this coaster reaches 95 miles per hour, which is an incredible speed. Something I didn't mention for Nitro and Candemonium is that these have super comfortable B&M clamshells. Let's get back to the layout. 
After the drop, it goes into a 90 degree bank turn, a twist, a wave turn that goes over the park entrance, and then one of the signature elements, which is the treble clef. This is a super fun element and a good way to turn around the train. I also got some good air time at the top. After that, the train dives under the station, then heads into a turn, a trimmed airtime hill, and then an upward helix. I didn't really mind the trim brakes on this airtime hill. I still got solid airtime, and I don't really think it affected the ride that much. The helix I thought was the only dead spot of the ride. It doesn't last for that long though because you're still going pretty fast. After the helix, you go into the final elements, which are a series of airtime hill that provide amazing floater. Then you go into the massive brake run. This also has the best operations out there. I don't think I mentioned that, but they're excellent consistently under 30 seconds, which is just nuts how they do that that fast. Aside from the operations, it's a super fun, fast, long, and airtime filled layout that I hope you can see why it is my number one. Thank you guys so much for watching this video in its entirety. This video took an incredible amount of time to make, so I gotta ask that you sub to my brother. Here is a list of honorable mentions that didn't quite make the list. I'm just going to name those off really quick starting from number 16. Intimidator at Carowinds, Dominator at King's Dominion, Bizarro at Great Adventure, Talon at Dorney Park, Great Bear at Hershey Park, Comet, super underrated that one, that one's at Hershey Park. Uh, Superman Ultimate Flight, which is at Great Adventure, Steel Force, Dorney Park, Hydra, also at Dorney Park, and then Jack Rabbit, which has an amazing double down. That one is at Kennywood. Leave a like on this video and have a nice day. Bye-bye.